Flame has a unique artist-friendly interface that enables one to work in a very intuitive and free way. Being able to effortlessly move between the desktop editing reels, the timeline and the batch compositing gives the artist complete freedom to create and finish the project using state-of-the-art tools to the highest standard. For the compositors and visual effects artists, having the constant access to all the project's media, the desktop reels and the timeline is invaluable as one can organize the work and view the shots in the context of the sequence. The ability to retouch images, create comps, add visual effects and motion graphics offers the editors a newly found freedom to finish the project for the final delivery. Flame's default interface has three core areas, the viewing panel, the editing panel and the media panel. The editing panel has additional tabs, media hub, conform, timeline, batch compositing and tools. The media panel displays the hierarchical structure of a project's media and the way it is organized in Flame. The workspace is at the top of the media panel. We have only one workspace displayed, as we are working on our own rather than collaboratively, so we are not connected to other Flame family products whose workspaces would be displayed here if we were. The workspace is split into three parts. One, the desktop, that contains batch compositing groups and real editing groups for organizing the media, editing and adding effects, as well as sequences for edited clips. Then we have two, the libraries, with one default library, but we can add as many libraries as we wish to store our media. And finally, three, shared libraries, which are used in collaborative workflows to exchange files with other artists who are working on the same project using the Flame family software like Flare, Laster or Flame Assist. We can copy the clips or folders from the library into the reels or batch. I will select few clips and move them to different reels in the media panel. The reels in the viewing area, let's call them the desktop reels, reflect what is in the media panel reels. Desktop reels are where we organize, edit and add effects to the clips. To keep organized we can change the name and color of the desktop reels to arrange the different elements of our media in the reels. We could name them offline reference, elements and so on and allocate a different color to each one. In the desktop reels we can collapse and uncollapse the clips, scroll through them, gesturally edit them, split them, discard the unwanted segments, splice them and add dissolves. We can also add effects from the tools tab by clicking on the effect of our choice, selecting a clip in a desktop reel, selecting the destination reel for the render, adjusting the effect and the rendered clip will be placed on the designated desktop reel. Batch compositing reels is where we organize the media we wish to comp. Each batch compositing group represents a separate comp. We can rename batch to shot one comp. If we select few clips from the library and drag them to a batch group, we can organize them in batch schematic reels. And just like editing reels, rename and color code them. We use batch shelf for the batch renders and shelf rail for the elements we may need in the comp at a later stage but don't want to overcrowd our schematic with them at this stage. If we double click on the batch, we are in a batch node compositing environment and all the media from the batch schematic reels of shot one comp has been loaded into the batch node compositing environment. But we still have access to all the media in the media panel and can bring in new shot elements if needed. By default, the media panel is on the left-hand side of the interface, 
but we can also view it full screen in either list view to see the detailed information of the individual media or the tile view to quickly scrub through the clips. This is very useful if your project contains a lot of media that you need to navigate through. As you scroll the media panel, the libraries, reels and folders will gather at the top of the media panel through dynamic folder accumulation to show you which part of the media panel you are browsing. If you want to media manage, we can switch to the dual panel view. This will give us two views of our media panel that are independent of each other, thus enabling us to look at different sections of the media panel at the same time. We can use this view to move elements between libraries and reels. We can also enable the timeline view underneath the media panel, so we can identify the selected clip in the timeline and vice versa, which is useful for editorial reviews. The tabs above the media panel enable us to display all the contents of the workspace, or just the desktop, or just the libraries, or just batch. The hotkeys for these display filters are Command F1 for all, Command F2 for desktop, Command F3 for library, and Command F4 for batch. If we don't want to display the media panel, we can click on the control button and swipe it away. We bring it back with the same action. The editing panel changes according to the part of the flame environment we are in. Under the editing panel, there are five tabs. By clicking on these separate tabs, different layouts of the user interface will be displayed with tools relating to the specific tasks we wish to perform. Each of the tabs has its own hotkey, Spacebar F1 for Media Hub, Spacebar F2 for Conform, Spacebar F3 for Timeline, Spacebar F4 for Batch, and Spacebar F5 for Tools. The Media Hub tab is where we access the media that is either on local or network storage, and where we import and export the media. The Conform tab is where we conform EDL, XML and AAF files so that we can recreate the edits created in other editing software. The Timeline tab is where we create sequences, edit and add timeline effects and batch effects. Batch is Flame node-based compositing environment. In the Batch editing panel, there are batch compositing tools containing extensive range of 2D and 3D tools as well as presets for creating high-end visual effects. The default viewing area is batch schematic, but we can change the display view to two up and view the schematic on the left and the result of our comp on the right. For action 3D compositing, we can have four up view to monitor the different views of our camera. The Tools tab gives access to effects and tools that are used to modify clips in the desktop reels. Modified clips can then become source clips in batch or batch effects. When we move between the tabs, the media panel is always displayed by default so that we can have access to the media from all the tabs. The Viewing panel has several layout modes. We are currently in the Reel mode. By clicking on the View Mode box, we can change to another viewing mode, like Freeform Layout, which we would use to organize and change files that are in our currently selected reel. Current reel is indicated by the eye icon next to it in the media panel. In the Freeform Layout, we can only view clips in the currently selected reel. If we move clips from the library or other reels to the current reel, the clip will be loaded into the current reel freeform layout. The player is another layout mode and whatever clip is currently selected will be loaded into the player. The player has standard playback buttons that reveal extra options by clicking on the little black triangle in the corner of the playback buttons. In the case of play button, we can select different modes of play like loop, normal, and so on. The standard editing hotkeys, like J to play backwards, 
K to stop and L to play forward are also available. The Source Sequence View dual display displays the source clip on the left side and the sequence on the right hand side. We create a sequence by going to the Sequence Rail and right click New Sequence. The menu pops up with the parameters that match the project parameters. We just need to enter the sequence name, the duration of the sequence, and then click Create. A sequence is added and a sequence tab appears above the timeline. We can drop few clips one by one into the timeline where we have all the editing tools available to perform an edit. The next viewing mode is the triptych view. Each of the three views is labeled with different color icon, green, yellow and orange, that relate to the current frame indicator in the sequence timeline. This is very useful when wanting to see different parts of the sequence at the same time for grading, matching or comparing shots. Theme view is the next available viewing mode and comes in dual display. Whatever clip from the sequence we have selected, the cursor will jump to the nearest cut in the sequence. This is the view we use when we wish to perform gestural editing. The hotkeys are as follows. Tilde key to go to Reels view. Control tilde to go to Freeform view. Control 1 to go to the Player view. Control 2 to go to the Source Sequence view and Control 3 to go to the Triptych view, Control 4 to go to the Trim view. But you can also swipe left or right in the viewer to toggle between the previous and the current viewing mode. When we wish to save the current state of our work, we go to the bottom right of the screen, change the name of the desktop and save desktop. This will save all the active components of our work batch groups, real groups, media and setups to the library. Save desktop icon is a folder with a film reel. By default, it saves to the root of the main library, indicated by the yellow arrow icon. When you want to save the desktop again, the menu will ask you if you wish to add, replace or rename the desktop. To change the current desktop, save desktop Select another one and drag it to the reels. To save the project, we click Ctrl S. We can access user preferences by clicking on the Flame logo, selecting Preferences and User Interface. There are a lot of options to change the default settings in Flame, but I will mention just few. Tooltips are a very useful feature to have on while working in Flame as they will give you the information on the different tools while hovering over them. I kept them off for these tutorials so as not to confuse you. In User Preferences, we can also change the direction or number of reels displayed on the desktop. At the very right of User Interface Preferences is Gestural Workflow, where we can enable or disable swipe bars. We should enable them to make sure we are taking the advantage of this very efficient and time-saving workflow in Flame. We can also change and customize keyboard shortcuts by clicking on Flame logo and selecting Keyboard Shortcuts. By default, to undo and redo, we use Ctrl-Z and Ctrl-R respectively, even on the Mac. In the next video, we will start working on our project and import the media into Flame. For more in-depth tutorials on the individual Flame tools, please go to Autodesk Flame Learning Channel on YouTube.